This year's Astana Economic Forum featured a world anti-crisis conference devoted to addressing the faltering global financial system. Banking disasters, soaring youth unemployment and the prevailing sense of economic uncertainty all meant Europe was a central focus. Crisis has been the buzzword for the past five years, but how did we get there? And what are the solutions to get the global economy back on track? For former Italian Prime Minister Romano Prodi, there has not been enough common policy in Europe. In Europe now, because of this losing mentality, there is the idea that all the world is in crisis. The world never went so well. Asia is growing, Africa also, starting of course from zero, but is growing. Uh, United States are from two to three percent, only Europe is suffering. When you have the zero growth, uh, uh, horrible unemployment, uh, even more horrible of young unemployment, you have to put some fuel in the economy. For the Nobel Prize winning professor Christopher Pizzaridis, the mistake was rushing into a single currency before creating the necessary institutional mechanisms that would ensure its success. It's not going to be easy because they've got to be very brave decisions, in particular when forming the banking union and the uh, fiscal union, which I think we need. Uh, but they need to be done because if they are not done, then the single currency will be holding back growth rather than helping it, which was the original idea. For Microsoft's European chairman, the answer is education. He called on politicians to invest in providing Europeans with the right skills to create growth. The only thing Europe can sell is the ideas, you know, right? We can sell only ideas. It's about, in Europe, the model is about unlocking European potential. There is a lot of potential. But we need to make sure that we are really take education and skills as a mantra for the whole Europe. For Lady Barbara Judge, chairwoman of the UK Atomic Energy Authority, national self-interest was the problem and partnership the prescription. We have to look at energy policy. One of the things the EU does not have <clears throat> is a strong energy policy. It's a nationalistic situation. Each country thinks it has its own solution. In fact, energy is something that we could look at together. If we were to share our different forms of energy, if we were to construct grids that worked across, across all of Europe, we could lower the price of energy to the consumer. If we lower the price of energy to the consumer, we can use the money to fuel manufacturing. More than 9,000 participants gathered for the event's opening, chaired by Euronews's very own Stefan Grobe. Almost goading its European participants, the forum took place in the capital of Kazakhstan, a country currently experiencing massive growth thanks to its vast hydrocarbon reserves. Floating on an exhalation of petrodollars, Kazakhstan has been identified as one of only a few nations which might actually benefit from our rapidly changing global economy.